Well, hello viewers, you are now watching Global News Relay with me, Septrani Galib, and we'll bring you the latest news from Jakarta and beyond for the next 20 minutes. And here is the first news. Located next to the bustling city of Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, Bogor District provides one of the finest botanical gardens in Indonesia. As the largest orchid and also diverse plantation preservation in Indonesia, this beautiful place can be the best tranquilized place and to study about plantation in Indonesia. Cindy Pascalina from Binus TV has it more for you. Smart viewers, right now I'm in Bogor Botanical Garden. In this place, there are thousands of plantations that were well conserved, such as Orchid and Rafflesia. This is also one of the conservation area to reduce the impact of climate change. As you can see, all these plantations can absorb carbon dioxide and also provide more oxygen. Want to find out more about this place? Follow me. Bogor Botanical Gardens or Kebun Raya Bogor is a botanical garden that is located in Bogor, Indonesia. It is currently operated by Indonesian Institute of Science. This area is part of Samida or man-made forest. The purpose of this forest is to protect seeds of rare trees. In 1744, the Dutch East India Company established a garden and mansion at the site of the present botanical gardens in Buitenzorg, which is now known as Bogor. The icon of Bogor Botanical Gardens is Titan Arum, or the flower that blossoms once in a few years. This garden has more than 12,000 collections and consists of 3,000 species of plants, like this giant water lily. Today, the garden contains 13,983 specimens of trees and plants, 3,373 species, 1,257 genera, and 218 families. Orchid House is one of the famous sections in the gardens. For your information, Indonesia is the country with the highest orchid diversity in the world. Orchid Collection Unit of Bogor Botanic Gardens have collected 500 species of native orchids from Indonesia. The Orchid House includes two wings and one central information hall. This special building was officialized by the fourth president of Indonesia, Megawati Soekarno Putri, in 2002. Besides Orchid House, Mexican Garden is one of the most interesting places in Bogor Botanic Gardens. This area consists of many types of plants that are usually found in the arid regions, which is very unique because Bogor is famous as rainy city. If you are looking for interesting and educative place to visit, you can consider a visit to Bogor Botanical Garden. This garden is usually on the list of tourist destination or school study tour. Here you can enjoy the nature beauty while grasping some fresh air away from the bustling city. You also can learn more about plants around the world in this place because in Bogor Botanical Garden, you can ask the garden's management for a tour guide to give more information about this amazing garden. So that's all about Bogor Botanical Garden. You can enjoy the scenic garden along with your friends or your family. You can have a picnic or jogging while enjoying this fresh air. If you are interested about this amazing place, you can come every day from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. I'm Cindy Pascaina from Indonesia reporting for Binus TV. The increasing of waste production in Indonesia, especially Jakarta, has become a problematic matter. But a hero appears between the people. She is able to cut the waste production from her home and turn the garbage into something profitable. Moreover, the quality of the redesigned garbage can totally awe you. Who is the superhero of today? Binus TV has it more for you. People are living with garbage all over the history. There are no days in our lives that we don't produce waste. As the global production of garbage increases, so does the world that is turning into a huge garbage can. 
Indonesia is one of the countries that produce the largest waste in the globe. However, nowadays many countries have applied zero waste program to minimize their country's waste, including countries in Southeast Asia. Zero waste focuses on waste reduction and encourages the redesign of resource life cycles so that all products are reused. In Jakarta, Indonesia, we found the right place where zero waste is applied. Halo Smart Viewers, saat ini saya tengah berada di sebuah tempat yang unik di kawasan Setiabudi, Jakarta Selatan nih. Nah tempat yang unik ini dinamakan Bank Sampah My Darling. Seperti yang Smart Viewers lihat nih, top yang saya kenakan terbuat dari sampah loh yang didaur ulang menjadi sebuah karya yang sangat indah. Nah masih banyak lagi karya-karya yang unik dan menarik yang ada di Bank Sampah My Darling. Penasaran? Yuk ikuti saya! The founder, Yeni Mulyani, gave its name Bang Sampah My Darling, which literally means a garbage bank. She started off five years ago with her simple mission to reduce garbage around the city. Whenever she sees garbage, she will think of redesigning it into something profitable, such as plastic bag that can turn into bracelets, a box that can turn into a strong chair and table, and many more. Five years have passed and now she already has a community to put their concern on waste reduction. Yeni Mulyani also got the opportunities to teach the guest lecture sessions in many Indonesian universities. Saya hanya berpikir apa yang bisa saya lakukan, saya lakukan. Mulai dari hal terkecil, mulai dari diri sendiri dan mulai dari sekarang sukses sejati buat saya itu bila mana semakin banyak orang mau mendaur ulang sampahnya mulai dari sumbernya yakni dari rumah mungkin Jakarta ini mungkin Indonesia ini bisa bersih syukur-syukur bisa menuju negara yang zero waste seperti Singapura hanya itu impian saya jadikan sampah sebagai gaya hidup trust is my life one thing she hopes is that the government will open their eyes to see the raging phenomenon of growing waste production, especially in Jakarta. Her vision is to see people start to reduce the waste from home and recreate something useful from the garbage. Hoax is now something that most people have used to deal with in this globalization era. As an effort to not to spread hoax for self-business, one of the campus TV in Indonesia becomes a place for students to learn and express their creativity through broadcasting world with well integrity. As many people these days can easily access the internet, they can also easily create and share the latest news in just a matter of second, anytime and anywhere. In other hands, media are getting challenged by the pressure to get as many viewer or rating that could cause the potential of fake news or known as hoax to emerge and consumed by the society. As an effort to be the campus media, Binus TV, one of the campus TV that based on online streaming channel, has the purpose to show an educative and entertaining program to the audience. Binus TV is against hoax, avoiding it to gain profit. Instead, Binus TV provides credible and informative news before being broadcasted. The impact would be, uh, I can call it enormous, yeah, because uh, young generation, yeah, because uh, they uh, we call it a moment after the golden age. They they still think for me, uh, for me, they still think like a sponge, yeah, like a sponge. So they try, they try to absorb a lot of information, sometimes without giving any filter. So um, that's why for me the impact could be so enormous and sometimes uh, they can uh, change it into some action yeah it is okay if it if it is a good uh, the, the hoax give people uh, the hoax give the student or young generation a good impact but uh, what we don't want is when the young generation give us a bad impact TV campus in Indonesia for me it's it, it is uh, not only a channel it is not only a facile but it is a way of young generation try 
uh, to adapt from their young age into um, more adult why because uh, sometimes uh, people don't listen to young generation uh, and for me TV campus helps them helps them to become a good channel and give a, and give a good chance for a young generation to also speak about uh, maybe about news or maybe to express themselves uh, in a good way yeah for me it's like a logical consequence because i believe in every tv campus in indonesia uh, they taught uh, they taught the young generation how to become more wise in using a media not only uh, because now is the the era of media convergence so uh, the tv campus i believe every tv campus uh, taught every uh, young generation or their student how to use the media uh, in a really really wise way including how to use social media including how to use uh, any kind of uh, digital me uh, media that they uh, have in everyday life before the coverage team make their way to the scene, they are already briefed by the supervisor about the current topics they are going to cover. The script writer also produces the script that is based on facts. Most importantly, they are strictly restricted to take profit to write story or news that is against the facts that happened on the scene. Uh, my message is quite simple, is try to maintain uh, the factuality of whatever message that you want to represent or express or try to send to another people because uh, factuality or facts or truth is the value of the message so please try to maintain that Having citizens that come from so many different backgrounds make Indonesia known as one of the most diverse states in the world. Among that diversity, religion being one of the most prominent aspects that need to be concerned of every institution in order to maintain tolerances on the environment. Here is how students in Binus University deal with this diversity of religion. As a democratic state that keeps Pancasila as the national principle, Indonesia gives an opportunity to all its citizens to have and believe in their own religion. There are six religions that are already recognized by the government. These religions are Islam, Catholic, Christian, Hindu, Buddha, and Konghucu. This idea emerged because the people of Indonesia have to carry the spirit of diversity that exists in Indonesia, which is Bineka Tunggal Ika. In other words, it means unity in diversity. The spirit of unity encourages people to avoid clash between cultures in Indonesia. Binus University, as one of the educational institutions, has the responsibility to construct the nation and to encourage the spirit of diversity. To implement the spirit of diversity, one of the methods that is applied by Binus University is giving the supporting material for the students to learn more about their religion through religious organizations. There are six religion organizations in the university. They usually have their routine activity every Friday at 11 a.m. The event will be unleavened by several activities such as advisory, religious speech, discussions, and other religious activities. Uh, keberagaman agama di Binus University ini sangat luar biasa ya kalau saya rasa karena uh, di Binus University, Binus University sangat mendukung kegiatan-kegiatan agama dan uh, diwadahi gitu, diwadahi sehingga orang-orang uh, beragama tetap dapat melaksanakan kewajiban agamanya dan semakin berkembang dalam imannya seperti itu. Uh, sampai saat ini hubungan pengembangan sama hubungan agama, agama sangat sangat akur dan tidak ada perselisihan yang terjadi semuanya sangat damai. Banyak mahasiswa yang berasal dari berbagai daerah termasuk saya juga bukan berasal dari Jakarta tentu saja dengan keanekaragaman budaya dan agama yang menurut saya komunitas keagamaan di Binus ini harus dilestarikan dikembangkan. Untuk uh, sebagai wadah umat beragama di sini, di Binus. 
untuk keberagaman di Binu sendiri uh, Binu sendiri kan sudah mendukung apa terbentuknya ukm ukm agama jadi setiap aga, setiap agama sendiri sudah mempunyai ukm agama sendirinya jadi untuk keberagaman sendiri sudah cukup bagus toleransinya juga sudah cukup bagus di Binu sendiri Hopefully, this activity could give a positive effect to the university and the society and the increasing of tolerance between people in Binus University. It has been the end of the show. I'm Septrani Galib and the rest of the crew would like to say thank you and have a nice day.